Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Let's go to our next guest. He is the director of the Training Center at Mercy College of Health Sciences here in Des Moines. Deacon Steve Tatz joins us. Good to see you, Deacon. Good morning. And you were uh, at the Eucharistic procession that was in Council Bluffs yesterday. I sure was. It was beautiful. Yeah? Tell me about it. Well, it was a, it was a hot day, but people made it out in, in droves. Uh, we saw the Eucharist, our Lord, come over this long bridge uh, over to River's Edge Park in Council Bluffs, and uh, Archbishop Lucas transferred the Lord to Bishop Johnson, and then we uh, did pro- process. We had Mass there while the procession was coming to us, and then we processed over to Corpus Christi in Council Bluffs and uh, had a holy hour there, a light lunch, and all was very, very good. The Lord gave us a nice wind, too, to kind of uh, offset the very hot temperatures. So how many people were there? I'm not Would great you know? at that. No, no, uh, no. but Crowds. Hundreds. Yeah, hundreds, yeah. for sure. It looked awesome. I, I, I uh, have been hearing all about it. I know there was some great excitement up there. I have a friend that was there as well, and uh, she loved it. So I think it's, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, where's it going next, Deacon, you said? Yeah, so today it uh, goes from Corpus Christi and Council Bluffs. Uh, there's actually a 10-mile procession wow. uh, down towards, uh, I believe it's Holy Rosary in Glenwood, I think, is the, is the parish. Mm-hmm. Um, there'll be, uh, again, light lunch uh, after the, the procession into there, and then it'll, it, it finds its way to Imogene, uh, St. Patrick's tonight, where there'll be overnight adoration. Uh, actually, Imogene is thrown on quite a celebration. I know they've got, uh, we, we had the uh, secretary from the parish on last week, and um, the, yeah, it, it, it's, it wraps up tomorrow from Imogene, heads down to Shenandoah, and then down into Missouri, so Ooh. on its way to Indianapolis. There we go. Well, the Lord uh, has blessed us. I will be there us. tomorrow, by the way. Oh, it's, nice. Uh, yeah, we're going to, family's going to get up and uh, go down to uh, Imogene for Mass at 9 o'clock, and cool. then there is, a, a, I think, a, just a one-mile procession out of Imogene tomorrow. So. I love it. I love it. Deacon Steve. Yes, sir. Hi. Hello there. All right. Again. So, we're ta- <laughs> so now we're talking about the training center. I w- yes. Y- y- this is uh, a new gig for you, right? Sure. I've been there one year now. Nice. Uh, so Mercy, Tra- Mercy College of Health Sciences has a training center. This training is particularly for emergency cardiac care. Uh, most people would think of CPR in particular. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... This is the training center that's the largest in the state. It provides the certifications and recertifications for uh, CPR to Mercy One, all of its affiliates. It also does for Unity Point and to the public. Uh, we do schools, we do businesses, everything, and even individuals as well. So it's all about training in life-saving things because, you know, when it comes to heart attacks and cardiac arrest, you know, that's going to claim... AHA, we're AHA affiliated. and what, that, what does that mean? So uh, which one, the cardiac? A- AHA. AHA is the American Heart Association. Got it. Thank you for asking. So they're okay. celebrating their 100th year. Uh, they provide the trainings for millions of healthcare workers throughout the world, and they provide the guidelines regularly for the updates to always improving to make it a little bit better. But at the same time, when it comes to saving lives, I like to tell the general public, Anything is better than nothing yeah. when it comes to seeing somebody collapse. In fact, uh, you mentioned before we got on that you were interested in, in maybe training. You know what? We could do a very simple version of that right now oh, if you'd like. yeah. Let's do it. All right. So All right. if you see somebody collapse, okay. a teenager or adult, and you see them collapse, very simply, two steps. Okay. Number one, get help. Get help means Call 911 in most cases. If you have access to another emergency response, that's fine. But for most people, that's calling 911 and getting help. People, an AED is amazing. If you have access to an AED or you can send somebody to get that, that is an automated external defibrillator. Uh, it talks you through everything it's one of those to shock do. things? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that, that, that's a technical term, shock thing. So that's the first step is getting <laughs> get help and, and get the shock thing. Yeah. And number two is compressions. That means you're going to press hard and fast and I know that in the, the center tune, of the chest. Right. The tune is staying alive. Staying alive is a great staying one. There's alive. others that work, but uh, that's probably the best well known. And that's it has a one. nice theme to it, too. But you know what? 
that's you've just improved. Do you keep the elbows bent or are straight, or do you bend the elbows when you're compressing? Since you're trying to save someone's life, I would say lock your elbows so you're using your body weight. So now, you're, if you're trying to, to bulk up and you're trying to do a, a workout, then yeah, use uh-oh, use uh-oh. use your arms. But so in this you wanna, case, you're you trying save to save life. life, so I'd yeah. like you to lock those arms. Because when you're doing those compressions, what you're doing is you're pumping blood to the brain and other tissues throughout the body. Right. So the heart needs to fill up with blood. And then you need to pump it hard enough so that it's going throughout the body. If you do that, you're keeping them alive until emergency help arrives. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be a little squeamish here when I ask this question. But it's, it really is a good thing to ask, I think. You're going to feel some ribs breaking. About uh, one third yeah. of the time, you will bruise or even fracture ribs. Because I mean, when you're process. pushing that, so I, I want that to say that because don't think you're doing it wrong. Well, and I would, I would say I think the important other thing that you bring to light there, John, is that uh, you you really do have to 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 get into it, so to speak, right? If you're if if you're pushing softly, right? It it, it it's something is better than nothing, but. Yeah. For the full effect, you need to really put some. Uh, I think your you weight into just it. get trained. The av- the average adult, you're doing one and a half to two inches deep. Yeah. yeah. For for that blood to go all the way through. How many people are trained in this? Less than ten percent of the population are trained. CPR trained. Yes, and wow. even fewer are certified. So you might ask, why would somebody be certified? Isn't it better just to train and know it? Uh, Really, if you are certified, I think I like to say it turns a possibility into a responsibility. Mm. If you are certified, you are going to act. You see somebody go down, you're going to rush to the scene. Whereas otherwise, you're going to be the innocent bystander. You're like, oh, somebody's closer. They'll do something. Right. And you see that. That's actually a really good point, right? I, I was just thinking, as you were saying that, like, yeah, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be the first one to go you know, help someone right now. But if I was trained... I certainly would. What does certification look like? How can people get trained? And also, is uh, the Heimlich, or uh, what do you call that training? It's called abdominal thrust, abdominal, because yeah. the other term you yeah. used is probably patented or yeah. something like that. But uh, no, you're you're good. Oh, okay. uh, that is very important for choking, and first aid is something that's also taught through the training center. Okay. How do people get trained in all this? Uh, they can contact us, or they can look on the website to see where the classes are. I can give you a simple website. Yeah, give us a website. So MCHS, that stands for Mercy College Health Sciences, dot enrollware, E-N-R-O-L-L-W-A-R-E dot com. With that, classes will come up for CPR. There'll be basic life support. There'll be heart saver. There's even advanced classes on there. But we also do emergency medical technicians, certified nursing assistants, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of these certificate classes are on there. It's not the full classes of Mercy College of Health Sciences, but particularly to the training center. Nice. Deacon Steve Tatz coming on on the training center for Mercy College of Health Sciences. Go get trained. They've got a lot of opportunities available as well. Are you trained in every one of them? I am not in the advance. Not in the advance. Well, and, and part of that is because I think the stories, the anecdotes are so helpful, so important, because I haven't been on that scene. I've worked in hospitals, yeah. so I can say to that, but I haven't, I don't do the advanced cardiac life support we'll get or there. the pediatric. We'll get you there. I could. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. you know, I it, know. If, if I may, just real quick, is I think the, uh, the important thing is if you've ever been in a situation where, where this is needed. And uh, like John just said, you end up being a, an observer or an, you know, a bystander. Uh, you know, you never want to be caught in a situation where you wish you could have done something or, or that the, there was something you could do. And, and this certification uh, helps a person, you know, confront the reality that many of us are going to be faced with at some point that somebody's going to be in need. And you might be the person that's able to step in and, and help save a life. Uh, so yeah, I encourage people to look into it and, uh, reach out to the, look, look up the website that Steve gave us. Uh, why don't you just give it one more time for people that, uh, that, that might want to take advantage of the opportunity. MCHS.enrollware.com, or they can always call 515-643-6671. That's 515-643-6671. Thank you, Deacon. God bless you. All right. And thank you. Thanks for having us on. He's Deacon Steve Tatz, everyone. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.